everyone, I'm teacher Kristen Natalie and today I will be talking about this piece called Lavender Field, which is part of the Grade 6 ABRSM 2021 and 2022 piano piece of solvers. Lavender Field is composed by Karen Tanaka, a Japanese composer, during her times in Paris. And this piece is part of the Spectrum 3, an international collection of 25 pieces for solo piano. It's very important to know what a composer wrote. Imagine weaving colors and scents with sounds. These are the musical qualities that you want to bring out when performing this piece through exploring different layers of sound. First, we want to take a look at the tonal center of this music. The key signature suggests D major, but in the beginning of the music, the music introduced G sharp as an accidental, which occurs quite consistently, making this music in a D leading mode. And this is what D leading mode is made out of. D, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, and D. And this is profoundly found in the main melody. This piece. D leader mode creates a very strong ethereal sense and imagery that a composer wants to achieve, and this is immediately pronounced in the start where the melody goes. The melody is predominantly found in the left hand, which is accompanied by a recurring pattern in the right hand. And the melody is presented in a very lyrical and flowing manner. And you want to make sure that each phrase ends in a very clear way. The tempo is in 62 dotted crotchet beats in a minute, which brings this music into relatively slow pace. And it is important that this piece is to be played very expressively to paint the beautiful melody lines. In terms of strictness of the tempo, it is possible to leave some room for a little rubato and accelerando to complement the nature of this piece. And as for the time, it's in compound duple time 6-8, which slowly shifts into 9-8 in bar 3 and then back to 6-8 again in bar 7. This creates a very blurred effect for the strong beat as it creates unevenness for the melody line. As for dynamic, dynamic plays a huge role for this piece as it always lingers on the soft range. At the beginning, it starts at pianissimo sempre which means always very soft. And when the melody is being introduced in bar 3, it enters with piano espresso, which translates to expressively soft. The very delicate dynamic progression, combined with gentle tempo marking and also the compound time, makes this piece has an impression of blurriness. Remember when the composer said, imagine weaving colors and scent with sound. Well, this is what she's talking about. And the concept of blur effect was also continued by always evolving chord that happens throughout the second page of the piece. The chord evolution happened through common notes. And pay attention to this part of the piece in bar 13, where the common note is G and B flat, down to G only, drifting away, and back to C, and back to a single ground. It is very important to realize the transition smoothly by listening to the common tone and delicately maneuvering your finger through the downward motion of the passage. 
And when this moment comes to a stop, notice that the passage ended on the fifth quaver. And the effect you want to achieve is an abrupt, hanging in the midst of air kind of effect. And now let's listen to some music, shall we? Now let's talk about the intricate part of this piece. In the first page, we could see polyrhythm occurring several times. And it first appeared on bar three, where you see three quavers on the right hand playing against two dotted quaver on the left hand. So when you're playing a polyrhythmic passage, you want to achieve a smooth and flowing impression. And this is what you do. You align the first quaver and the first dotted quaver and slip the second dotted quaver in between the second and third quaver on the right hand. See how it flows so smoothly? As the music goes along, we also come to another very important point, which is the very huge leap at the end of phrases. It's very important to maintain this very delicate connection, as the arriving point is often at a very high pitch, which could act as a disruptive flow to the music. And the melody also cuts across the right hand accompaniment. This is where balancing between both melody and accompaniment is very crucial. The right hand accompaniment needs to give way for the left hand melody to penetrate through. And to achieve this connection, it's very important to listen closely to your melody, melody line. And by letting your left hand goes across the right hand, it allows more flexibility and access. This is what I'm talking about. Yes. Cut across. Left hand cutting across the right hand accompaniment. Now coming to the next important part, which is the lead that goes from the right hand region to the lower left hand part. It first appears on bar 9 and it is a very sudden shift that you are not given any time to transition immediately from a crotchet to a quaver. So in 6-8, it's counting 1-2-3. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'll be playing from bar 8. before it arrives. Also very important to take note is in bar 12 where the left hand and right hand part merges into a single note which is D. You notice how that single note which then quickly disperses into different direction creates a beautiful beautiful interaction between musical line which then gets suspended in the air. 
Next part I want to point out is the different layers of sound in this music and ensuring that each layer is very clearly defined. In bar 15, for instance, you can see a very low bass note making its presence into the music. And this very low and warm tone is a complete contrast from the ongoing right hand pattern. Thus making the challenge here is to create this two contrasting quality blend. Hence when you set your fingers to touch the key of the piano, you want to create this very warm and settling tone that could blend so well with the right hand accompaniment molding them into one unity. Also keep in mind the sequence of the piece where in bar 22, it is indicated the couple or coda which requires you to go back to the beginning of the piece and repeat it till bar 13, which makes you then proceed to coda. Now we have come to know all the things you need to know for Lavender Fields and I hope to see you in the next video.